So my name is Daisy Nieto. I'm uh, one of the chief residents here at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Medicine. I grew up in Texas and went to medical school in San Antonio, Texas, uh, then came up here for my residency. Uh, plans for the future include a cardiology fellowship in Houston uh, starting in July. My name is Andrew Olson. I'm the other chief resident here at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Medicine. I went to medical school uh, in I, uh, Northern California at UC Davis School of Medicine uh, and did a medicine internship at the University of California, San Francisco bef before coming uh, here to Minnesota to do my medicine pediatrics residency and I'm planning on a career as an academic medicine pediatrics hospitalist. We learned about Isabel as our department chair, uh, Dr. Wes Miller, was uh, trying to roll it out to the academic hospital list. So he was in conversations with Don about how best to uh, implement uh, the system or, or get access or gain access for our hospitalists. Yeah, Dr. Miller has uh, long been, uh, throughout our whole education, uh, a champion of uh, thinking about how we think, and he's found. Uh, Isabel to be uh, a very helpful tool in thinking how we think and so I uh, felt like uh, that implementing and getting access for everybody to incorporate into our culture is very important and so I uh, made access possible for all of us uh, about a year ago. Right. We use it in a couple of different ways. Our uh, hospitalists, our academic hospitalists, both on the resident services and on the uh, non uh, resident services uh, use it for as an, as an additional diagnostic tool. I think in the way that it's intended to be used when you have a patient for a couple of days who despite your best workup the diagnos diagnosis is a little bit elusive, um, it, we Isabel the patient and, and try and come up with things that have not yet been thought about. Um, but we've also I think been really successful in using it in our conferences as, as another educational tool. Absolutely. We have two conferences a week where our residents present a real-time case, a case that's on their team in the hospital now that they don't know what's going on or uh, they're stuck, they can't find exactly something else on the list. Uh, and so we somewhat formally in our conferences then said, well, let's stop for a second, run this patient through Isabel. Uh, you notice we made Isabel into a verb. Uh, we Isabel the patient, and we do that uh, a couple times a week, and we found that uh, without question, uh, every time we use it, our, our list gets longer, uh, and it's a really important teaching tool in how to make good differential diagnoses, which is fundamentally the point of our conferences. I think that absolutely the residents find it helpful, both in the conferences, uh, very frequently you'll see the team who's presenting the patient all of a sudden realize that this conference has turned from them presenting to them learning about what could be going on with their patient. They'll be taking notes about lists of things that could be your tests to send. Uh, that happens every time. It's really exciting to see. Uh, but it's also exciting when we get an email at night uh, from one of the residents that said, by the way, we had this patient admitted at our VA hospital or one of our other hospitals and we don't know, what, we didn't know what's going on and we used Isabel in the middle of the night. Right, and we know traditionally or historically um, residents and just doctors in general as a community are, can be resistant to change um, or new ideas, uh, but this one really has taken off. Our, our residents are very excited and very enthusiastic about incorporating Isabel um, into everyday activity. So I think, in my opinion, so a little personal story, I, I really thought I was kind of uh, skeptical at first of Isabel, um, thinking that uh, this is a way of replacing our brains. And then I, having talked with Dr. Miller and Daisy about it and went, went, used it a number of times, thought it's actually a way to make our thinking better. Uh, we never get feedback on our thinking when we arrive at a diagnosis, we, we stop. Um, because if I diagnose them with pneumonia, my thinking stops and I stop thinking about what they could have and start treating what they do have. Uh, and Isabel allows us then, sometimes even when we know a diagnosis, to realize what else is on that list. And that's an important exercise to do. And then also, I want a very exciting thing about Isabel is that you can change variables. Uh, our medical decision making is really complicated. We take innumerable variables and, and filter them through our brains and spit out a diagnosis. Um, and Isabel helps us formalize that by, by taking and changing the variables, changing the patient's age, changing the travel history, um, and arriving at a different list and seeing if our brains are doing the same thing. Um, and then another thing that we've recently uh, also uh, talked to our residents about in our conferences, and I think that Andrew helped pioneer, is letting them know that if you have a diagnosis or a differential diagnosis and you know that um, what's on Isabel's list is, what, is not what the patient has, um, either you've already ruled it out or, or you just know it's 
probably not a possibility, uh, but it, perhaps it's a diagnosis that you don't know all that much about. Um, and Isabel uh, it links to um, different, uh, um, it links to uh, the British Medical Journal, it, it links to up to date, and ways to just do a little bit of reading, um, kind of to buff up our medical knowledge uh, in the same in the same uh, small time span. Without having to, yeah, it's very fast as well. Like you can learn for three minutes, which is probably some of the most effective learning the residents can do that day. Absolutely. I mean, I think that any tool uh, uh, in the toolbox that can make you both a better doctor for your patients and a better uh, learner um, to continue in this journey of, you know, what we call lifelong learning, which is really what medicine is about. Um, I think that, that Isabel is just another tool um, that helps to incorporate other tools that we already use. Um, and so absolutely. Yeah, without question, as a a person who's planning on a career in medical decision making, I think it's a really exciting time to see technology help us, uh, realizing that our, our brain is still the most important tool in the job, but to realize that there are tools, just like our procedures have gotten better because our tools are better, we can diagnose things better because we have ultrasound uh, at the bedside. Uh, adding Ezebel, uh just makes us better diagnosticians and better physicians.